Their grunge sensibility sets off this exploration into agony perfectly and makes for some wicked rock and roll. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're speaking with Breaking Benjamin. So why don't we start by having you tell us the origin story of Breaking Benjamin. Started as like a cover band in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area. Just basically tried to find the best guys I could in the area and I wound up, you know, finding uh, the, the current members and we started doing three hours of covers because that's what you do at the time. I just slipped my originals in there and the uh, band took off. And growing up, did you have any musical idols? Nirvana has really been a huge influence on me. Kind of got me into playing guitar and got me into really paying attention to music rather than like just listening to music. I idolized Kurt Cobain as a teenager and uh, you know, like had my wall covered in, in his face and the band. I kind of just used his mentality and his way of writing and, and what I do now. What is your writing process like? I mean, at what point do, does the melody, the riffs, and all that stuff come into play? The process usually, I'd say about 99% of the time, is just a basic chord structure with a vocal melody. Then the basic chord structure gets complicated by a riff or a palm mute or whatever. We just try to make something that's easy, more complicated to play. But it's all still based off of that same chord structure. And, you know, then I'll add a riff, and then I'll write lyrics last. How do you think Breaking Benjamin's sound has uh, evolved since the beginning? I'm the primary writer in the band, so I've pretty much written all the albums myself, though I have collaborated on a few things. But for the most part, it's been pretty much just me, and you know, I've grown older and more mature, and I think when that happens, you can't avoid it being in the music. What were you guys going for on Dear Agony? Well, Dear Agony is the first album that I've ever written and recorded completely sober, so it was kind of a new adventure for me. Definitely a challenge because I relied heavily on alcohol for influence and inspiration and stuff. You know, Dear Agony, I think, is more personal because of the clarity of being sober. It kind of really made me focus especially lyrically in making things vague but at the same time making them make more sense than in the past. I can't get away with anything. I can't drink away any inadequacies in the lyrics, you know. So before it'd be if I was unhappy with a line I'd just take a shot and I'd be fine with it. Now, thematically, the album seems to follow kind of the same line of thinking. Was this a conscious decision? This one in particular, I can't really compare it to ones in the past. So I think in the past, anything that really kind of made sense thematically was, was a coincidence more so than anything else. And this one is definitely focused and definitely has vague subject matter in it. Thank you very much. Thank you.